This is the Pixel Insight process tutorial for exponential transformation. You find it in process, intensity transformation, and exponential transformation. First of all, very useful tool, so please hang in there. But I just want to start at the beginning because it's kind of a funny story. So there's this process, exponential transformation, and nobody seems to have a clue what it is for because it has no manual. It doesn't make any sense, neither the title of it nor the content here. There are no tool tips. That is just nothing. So then three years ago, Adam Block comes along and he actually, by experimenting with it, by writing code, he figures out what it does and he creates a lengthy video explaining all what he did, all the curves, everything. And then I think at this time, some other people picked up on that and created some other videos, which I found. But I have a feeling out of whatever reason, it seems to be still quite an unknown process. So from that point, definitely worth looking into it and making use of it. And then really a huge thank you to Adam Block, who actually laid the foundation to, to discover what this process is doing. And on the other side, this is just one of these mind-boggling facts of Pix Insight that you have highly useful processes and Pix Insight absolutely doesn't find it necessarily to... <laughs> to describe what they're doing, to give any manual. They're just sitting there to be discovered. And I really can't bring my head around that. So anyway, a lot of rambling. So let's have a look what it actually does. So as you see, I have the curve transformation open because I kind of can demonstrate you with that in a very easy way what it does. So when I do the preview in curve transformation and I'll take the curve, uh, just move it up here. That's in principle what this tool is doing, but just much better. Because if I increase the brightness of this picture like that, I have different issues. On one side, my background gets really blotchy because it also lightens up my background. And then on the other side, very bright areas, it also highlights that even more. It even might actually burn some stars out. So that's also not good. So obviously, what I can do now, I can first of all here go down with my background to get it back to dark. Then I can protect here my stars and bring that down. And so then kind of I get something useful, but if I look at it, yeah, it's then really a problem getting it in the right shape. But what I just showed you is in principle what this tool is doing just in a very professional way. It actually limits the brightening of the background. It protects the highlights from being further highlighted and any stars to be burned out. And it emphasizes the brightening in the middle. And that's really what we want. And with that, let's stop here this crazy experimenting with the curves and let's really go into this tool. So also here, that's also great. We have a preview, so let's open the preview. And we have actually here two functions. One is the pip, power of inverted pixels, and the other is SMI, screen mask invert. So with the pip, the background gets much less aggressively brightened than with the SMI method. So from that point of view, the PIP is in 99.5% of the cases the better option. And it's also the default when you open the process up. The lightness mask protects actually the brighter areas of the picture. And so also this is already default and should also in most cases left selected. So the only thing we have to do is actually work with the order, the intensity of the brightness and the smoothing, which is actually another kind of denoising factor. So when we look now at the picture, which is part of Fleming's Triangular Wisp, so this is my original. And now this is what we can achieve with the exponential transformation. It's quite amazing how much it brights up and it might be too much, but if we go down now from 1.0 to let's say around 0.6, that looks really cool. And you can see the background is not brightened. I wouldn't say at all. There's a little bit of additional brightness, but this could easily afterwards 
with a curve transformation or so be mitigated again. It's really nice how the nebula actually brightens. If your example look in these areas here, you really see that the color of these faint nebulosities are much more pronounced now, it's much more visible. And with the smoothing, from my point of view, I would be careful because it will smooth the whole thing and that's not really what we want. Um, the background, as I said, we can actually afterwards either just make a little bit darker again or we can just run, for example, a noise exterminator afterwards over it again if it created some noise. And I would also do this in principle before I would do things like contrast enhancement, like sharpening, so that when I do that, I already have this brightness effect already happening, that I can take that into account. But so I think as with all these processes, we don't have to overdo it. We could even do it a little bit less, but if we just with an 0.4, if you look at that, that looks really cool. And now that I have discovered actually this process, I think it will be an integral part of my workflows. If it's just for this, as in many cases, this little extra pop, which just makes the nebulosity stand out, which makes the whole thing look a little bit more spectacular. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please give me a like and press the subscribe button. Highly appreciate it. See you next time and clear skies.